Folks, it's Diamond with the Alpenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a grand solo in Krakatoa, aka Krakatoa, about to blow a increase, imminent. Ooh, look at the black ghost that just came out there. That was fascinating. You, it's taken us six hours to get this video together. We've had connectivity issues, and we're back online, folks. Keep calm. It's boom time. <laughs> Loveland Pass remains closed after snow slide. That's Colorado, kids, and that's a landslide of snow. Crews needed daylight to work. Loveland Pass remained closed Thursday morning due to a snow slide the previous night. Authorities with the Colorado State Patrol said they were totally fluxed with snow. Ho, ho, Christmas is right around the corner. There's so much snow piled up in Greensboro, North Carolina. Crews are relocating it. The city has relocated snow in the past snowfalls, but this is the first time it has had to move this much. Especially because of how long it's stuck around. Now think about that. It's not even winter in the United States. Yes. That's over a week away. And the city has relocated snow in past snowfalls but this is the first time it's had to move this much because of how long it's stuck around. There is still so much snow around the city. Crews have started moving it out. First, the city assesses intersections where snow is piled up too high and blocking sight lines. Next, loaders dump the snow into crew trucks, which then move the snow to a service facility located on Patton Avenue. And it is the first time ever that Greensboro had to do that. Snow causes headaches for the capital region. This is up in the Adirondacks in New York State. Crashes, spinouts, there were even landslides in this area. Heads up, Adirondacks. More snow coming. We'll get to the models. National Weather Service issues a snow alert today. Yeah, this was in Connecticut and Massachusetts. A period of light snow got people bumming. Look at this guy. He's like, I cannot believe I'm a slave. I can't believe it. Boom! Get out of Dodge. Keep calm, though. It's boom time. Stop being a slave. Likely El Nino winter could mean more snow for San Antonio. Yeah. Isn't that in Texas? San Antonio can expect warmer nights, cooler days, and more rain. Possibly more snow than normal. And I'm going to share you a map that was created by a friend of mine, geologist, that's going to blow your mind tomorrow when we're working with less problems. But likely El Nino winter will be more snow for Texas. Snow joke, Prince George's Cat County family builds a 21 foot tall snowman. And this is no joke. Take a look at the scaffolding. These are the lower two levels. Look at these kids. They rock. Jason Smith told CBS 6 in Richmond that members of his family first tried to beat each other by building the largest snowman. However, after a while, their passion morphed into a team project with the goal of building the biggest snowman in world history in Prince George's County. And they might have nailed it. This 21-foot behemoth is pretty awesome, even though we're never going to watch the video. Sorry, it's getting late. Snowfall turns south central into winter wonderland. Alaska, it's finally there. This is in Alaska, and they're happy. 
because it hasn't been snowing there. The nonstop snow for nearly 48 hours was thanks to a stalled out low pressure system. It tracked into the region early this week, first moving into Prince William Sound, and the storm moved back north and west and settled right over Anchorage. So we had a direct tap of moisture, and winds gave us heavy snowfall late Wednesday into Thursday. They were loving it. So even during grand minimas, when the warm Pacific air keeps the corridor ice-free, it still snows. Ho-hos. And they're quite happy about it. 14 inches in the Upper Hill side, 11 in Chester Creek, 7 in Richardson, 8 in Anchorage. There you go, Alaska. It's winter, but it's not winter yet. <laughs> now, with this new system moving across west to east, there is flooding possible. This guy is concerned. Take a look at him. Look how concerned he is. He looks, I mean, that's pretty concerned. Heavy band through St. Louis down, approaching those snow areas. Flooding possible with rain melting and snow Friday. Get ready. Flooding rains are on the way. Greensboro, North Karakalaki. <laughs> We've been dealing with snow all week. Now it's time to deal with rain, which means flooding, flash flooding, clogged storm drains, and nightmares. A big amount is on the way. With rapidly melting snow, that means flooding is likely Friday and Saturday in the triad. Heads up. Whew. Meteorologist Tim Buckley, one to two inches of rain is likely up to three inches possible in some regions. Snow melts, adding significant water to already waterlogged areas. Snowpack and clogged drains increase flood risk. It's as if I just predicted that. I wonder if the KP is at zero. Yes, it just was. Okay, great. That makes sense. We'll get to the models. Friday flooding. Hey, all. Please spread the word here. Lots of rain on the way for Friday into Saturday. Do not drive through the flooded out rivers. You will be washed away. Sincerely, meteorologist Tim Buckley. That's today, folks. He's serious. He, it's quoted. Thank you, Tim. You're a mother bucker. We love you. GFS model, let's check it out. It's looking very dry in the lower 48. You're going to get time to dry out. Check it out. But not before Texas gets a little bit hit in the middle in the morning. Tomorrow. Two to six inches predicted in some areas. We'll see how that little nugget develops. But as record snows pile up in British Columbia, we're talking Washington State over the next week and a half. It will be epic up there. This is seven days out. Look at it. 91 inches. That's seven feet. So, and for you people up in the Northeast, take a look. Light snow will linger into your Connecticut tomorrow, as well as your Massachusetts. And then light up the state, and then through your weekend into Tuesday, you're going to have a good dousing. So there'll be nice snows up throughout New York State, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Heavy snows in Maine by midweek. And these models will change, but we have another southern storm tracking down all the way down into North Carolina. And this is already with snow tracking all the way down here to 25 north. That is far down there, folks. And it's not winter. Just looking how the snow pattern keeps moving southy. This is where the Florida Keys are, folks. Straight across. We're not making it up. And we're not making up the model either. It's mathematical. But this is record snow for the British Columbia, Alberta area. Record snow for Washington. Tilting <laughs> the record books. Heads up. We'll watch it. <clears throat> Heavy to excessive rain for southeast and mid-Atlantic into the weekend. High winds in the Pacific Northwest Friday. Another southern storm will bring heavy to excessive rainfall with the risk of severe thunderstorms from the central Gulf Coast to the southeast Friday. This heavy rain will then spread across the mid-Atlantic region late Friday into the weekend, and a strong cold front will move into the Pacific Northwest and dump possibly not only damaging winds, but damaging depths of that global warming goodness that's white that we call snow. Ho, ho, ho. Snow don't blow if you have a shovel. 
North Shore Mountain celebrating massive dump. We're in Canada now, folks, and it's Olympic. Snow conditions at Mount Cypress today are epic. The latest Pacific storm to hit the south coast has made for miserable commutes and flooding in the lower mainland. But up on the ski hills is nothing but smiles. Ear to ear, all three North Shore mountains have seen significant dumps of snow since the system blew in. As predicted, we nailed it. Cypress Mountain saw 48 centimeters over the last 48 hours. If you do the math, that's one centimeter per hour. Holy crap. That's barely any snow. While grouse saw 40 centimeters in the same period, looking like winter on the mountain this morning, we've had 36 centimeters of new snow in the past 24 hours, and it's still coming town. Hashtag all the snow. Hashtag grouse mountain. Hashtag Al Gore's a fraud. Hashtag your children will never see snow, except now it's record snow. But it's not snow. Nothing to see here. <clears throat> Both mountains... We're claiming because of global warming it will all be ruined and it's never going to ski there ever. But they're very excited to see all the snow on the ground. 42 centimeters in 24 hours. 55 centimeters in the last two days. Hey, hey. Historically, the opening date is mid-December and they're ready. With record snows, the big dump will no doubt come as a relief as local mountains had bought into the global warming nonsense. Yes. And now they're going to blame record snows on global warming, so they will relish in the global warming goodness. And that is a boom of misinformation. You don't even know what to believe. Damaging windstorm, heavy rain and snow targeting British Columbia. The biggest storm of the season so far set to slam into British Columbia will come on Friday. Bigger than the one that just brought over a centimeter an hour for two days. So we've just seen four feet of snow in many areas, and this one's bigger. Widespread potential for damaging winds, along with a hefty helping of snow and rain. Seven to ten feet predicted. Warnings for wind and rain are in effect for much of the south coast, Vancouver Island, as well as Washington State. But the National Weather Service hasn't issued any warnings yet. Because they're frauds. By the end of the weekend, we'll be talking about upwards of 100 millimeters of rain for some parts of British Columbia, 100 centimeters of snow for the Alpine, and winds gusting more than 100 kilometers an hour. A trifecta of winter nightmare. And that is a winter nightmare boom. Let's just move this square. Okay. Whew. Glad we got out of that one. <laughs> oh, let's move this. Guys, I'm sorry this went so late, but I've been working for hours to get this to you, so we are on the same team. We've already looked at this. Man, what's happening? Climate change, hell to pay if COP24 talks fail. Well, you know what happened at the COP24. We covered it over a week ago when it began. Many countries like Kuwait, the United States, et al. I think Brazil was in there. <laughs> says that the IPCC report is nonsense. And we will consider it as a talking point, but it is not going to be our main focus. And the reason is because those reasonable people know that the IPCC has been up to 300% wrong in their predictions. That's off the charts. It's not even close to being right. That's three times wrong. Now, after decades of buying into their BS, many people are making this a political issue, as it's been for decades. But the facts are in, and you cannot keep up a lie for this long until the general public smells the doo-doo in the air. And I despair. Now, the insane thing is former Maldives president Mohammed Nasheed. Who the fuck is that guy? Nobody knows. He said there'll be hell to pay if countries fail to take significant steps to tax the citizens for carbon. There will be hell to pay. I say hell. If that is not disturbing, I don't know what is. 
maybe all the real scientists will be hung at this on the chopping blocks or chopped at the stakes or however they do it these days. I certainly know that a former Maldives president named Mohammed Nasheed that no one's ever heard about and they quoted him means that there is no credibility to global warming left in the global community. If this is their main leader, the former Maldives president, Mohammed Nasheed, whew, it's pretty much a wrap, kids. <laughs> COP24, failure. And we will not be taxed for nothing. Thank God. Sounds like progress. We don't ask for perfection, just progress. Wilkes County family snowed in and without power for three days. Did you hear? This was the blizzard that was underreported, underpredicted, and still being underreported. But we're not. We're giving you the facts. Many U.S. cities and towns were at the mercy of deadly record breaking winter storms last weekend. Now, only. Very few people, including the uh, YouTube community, got nailed this right on the head because we're real scientists looking at real facts. <clears throat> and the debilitating snowfall swept through the s south and eastern states in the U.S. a little more than a day, causing hundreds of crashes, thousands even, hundreds of thousands of power outages, up to 426,000 at one point confirmed, and three deaths. The biggest snow accumulation that no one mentioned except us that I know of was in Busick, North Carolina, 34 inches. The mainstream barely only three sources mentioned 24 inches and six sources mentioned 18 inches. Not a single mainstream source ever was allowed to say 34 inches before winter fell and buried Busick, North Carolina. And look, I just said it three times. <laughs> and it makes me feel so good. According to the National Weather Service, 11.1 inches fell in Asheville. And I saw a mainstream source claiming that two inches fell in Asheville. That is quite a discrepancy. So someone tell me the truth is, if you live in Asheville, comment below how many inches you got. If you live in Busick, comment below how many inches you got. Because I know you didn't get two inches in Asheville. Now, Roanoke, now they're putting up 15 inches here. If you lived in Roanoke and you thought you got more, leave it in the comments below. <coughs> Wilkes County, which was the hardest hit up in Busick, North Carolina, five families, 20 people, including small children, were stranded in their homes for three days without power. And they could not get out until the neighborhoods, because they were buried. Till the National Guard came to get them. Did you hear about that? I doubt it. Did you see the record ice in Greenland? Yeah, the Arctic's melting. And it, when the Arctic melts and there's record temperatures, there's record ice that builds. Remember that. <laughs> the death of Sunspot Cycle 24. Now, this is coming from Energy Matters, and they're simply making a simple comparison with the death of Sunspot Cycle 23. And you're looking at pic pictures <laughs> of the death of Sunspot or Sun Cycle 23. Here are pictures from 2010, where huge snow in the Alps were deposited, eight meters. And they're pointing out that that was here at the solar minimum of 23. And now we're going into here and similar effects are taking place. <laughs> I wonder if the sun has something to do with that. Huge snow depths in Les Manuels last winter. You remember these? Incredible depths in Val Thorens on the 22nd of January. Staggering snowfalls in many Swiss resorts. They got up to one meter an hour. Have you ever heard of those depths? And now let's look at some crazier facts. Here is the advance of the Rhone Glacier you've seen in many pictures in 1856 at the end of the mini ice age. 
And the global warming alarmists use this because they show the modern day picture right here, which shows a massive retreat. But what they refuse to show you is this picture that we found. <laughs> and that's from 70 years ago, where the glacier is still in the same place. In 70 years, global warming hasn't changed the glacier. But since the end of the Dalton minimum, the meltback occurred. So clearly, the climate on Earth has stabilized in the last 100 years in some places. There is no catastrophic melting here. This is almost the same period as this picture is to the one above. Do you pick it up? Okay, now we're sliding. Good. So from this period to this period is the same as this period is to this period. So these two are about 80 years apart. There's no change. Today, 80 years ago. And then 80 years before that, whoa! I wonder if we just came off a mini ice age. It gets warm. Back by the 50s here. This is 1950s. And here we are in 2018. Heads up. Look at all that global warming, Al. <laughs> wow! What, what did they call this? From this to this, that was not global warming. That was just called extreme melting of glaciers prior to global prior to global warming you got that and now global warming is that global warming and then this is normal this is normal melt here this is man made okay let's do it again i love this Whew. ready <coughs> okay this picture is the end of the dalton minimum 100 years later. End of the Dalton Minimum, 100 years later. End of the Mini Ice Age, 100 years later. Today, no change. <laughs> a little bit of change. It's gotten a little warmer in the last 60 years. But almost no catastrophic loss. You want to see catastrophic loss? 1850, 1950. <laughs> 1850, 1950. 2018. 1950, 2018, 1850, 1950. Okay, facts are in. No one has done their homework. <laughs> At all. At all. It only takes a second. Shallow M63 earthquake rocks the Pacific Antarctic Ridge. This is a very high magnitude for a mid-ocean ridge. Thankfully, no one's there. At all, for thousands of miles. Seismic update. <coughs> Rakanus Ridge. We have more ocean ridge activity here. 5.0. Kicking off moments ago south of Iceland. More activity in the New Madrid. Two aftershocks from that major 4.4. 2.5 indicator. 2.7 west of Blaine. We also have an anomalous quake in Stapleton, Nebraska that has been repeating and is probably frac related. No other quakes to note. 5.3, 20 kilometers in Tadine, New Caledonia. And we have some rumblers kicking off here in Afghanistan. Most recent quake, 2.5, Pittsburgh, Cali. But the earth as a whole is quiet. And that's not good news. 4.8 West Chile rise. And I would be worried about this activity here. I really think that we're going to have some type of activity in the Caribbean uh, or the Nicaragua region associated with not only volcanic activity but seismic activity. So the next major quake I think is going to be in the Caribbean as well as the Indonesia region. So these two areas are worrying me because of slightly anomalous activity that's been happening over the several months. <coughs> Worldwide Volcano News Update. 
Aetna is on the charts. Uptick Central, we predicted it. It's been happening and it has been upticking gradually over months. Dukono, Sakurajima, Sabankaya, Abiko. Saku just erupted. Eruption at Abiko. Sabankaya. And it's happening. Check out Aetna. Let's look at the update. Aetna volcano, lava flows, strombolian explosions from the southeast crater. Multiple craters erupting now, simultaneously. Mild diffusive explosive activity continues from the eastern vent. Feeding two small lava flows traveling a few hundred meters down the eastern slope of the crater. This baby blows all the time. But it is associated with a larger caldera complex that can blow up completely. So this is just basically the edge of a larger complex just getting pissed off. Probably like you were getting pissed off because our video wasn't up. So let's all relax and listen to the sounds of Mother Nature. Cosmic rays heating the muons in the subsurface. Thank you, science. thumbs up here give him a thumbs up subscribe to the channel this is volcano discovery and tell them diamond sent you and say thank you this footage is amazing a m a s -G -G. and that's boom do it they only have 14k they should have more subscribers than we do they work very hard at volcano discovery give them props Hook them up. Estimated planetary K index. Let's update it, see what happens. We've had cosmic ray warnings for most of the last 24 hours. And we've luckily come up off the deck. So if you felt weird the, yesterday or all day today, a couple, there were mass shootings and other weird shite that happened today. Here we are. People can't handle the truth. So you start to get psychic and tap into the Akashic record. People get downloads. People on their deathbed experience, near-death experiences on KP0. Well documented. Look back in our previous videos where you can get that Freedom of Information Act from the CIA where they disclose what happens at KP0. Rosetta witnesses birth of baby bow shock around the comet. Yeah. This is the ongoing research of the iceless comet Rosetta with a electrically scoured neck piece that we have close-up footage that it's clearly a terrestrial rock, meaning a piece of a planet blown off from the surface. It's now spinning around Earth waiting to smash back into a planet or a sun. But what they're slowly revealing to us is the electrical nature of this comet. Clearly it has a magnetic field that's very strong if it's creating a bow shock. Magnetic fields are typically in space electromagnetic. Are you picking it up? I think NASA's sniffing it. And they know they can't avoid it. So <laughs> they're putting it down. Comet 67P. Cherry Mof. Give it Chinyenko. 67P is what everyone calls it. Clearly has a bow shock. And if you come down here to the bottom, you're going to see that back in 2016, they found a magnetic 
field free bubble at the comet. Huh. I wonder if it's an electromagnet. Boom! <laughs> These frauds. They're like decades behind the obvious. You know what's even more obvious? Go the outside right now and look up. Look southeast. Gemini meteor showers peaking tonight. One of the best streams in years. And you know how I know? I was just out there. Because I got really pedoed at four hours of wasted time because of my connectivity. I've been trying to make this video all night. And that's why I'm bringing you here to the insky.org planetarium because it calms me. <laughs> if you don't know where to look for the Geminids because you're an idiot, but you know where Orion is, follow me through. This is where if you know Orion is if you look south right now. Here is the belt and here are the sword stars. Gemini is up and left of Orion. So Orion is going to move through the sky and then Gemini will be there. So here's Orion and Gemini is more towards the east. Orion is in the south if you're in North America right now. So go out, look south and you should see Orion. And then look left. See this bullseye? Boom! <laughs> that is the Geminid origin point. Yeah, and so the meteorites come out of here like pew, 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 because there is literally a cylindrical stream of debris that is entering Earth's ionosphere at that point, discharging above the stratosphere electrically before it hits the surface, thankfully, because these are little tiny chunks. Not like the Taurids, which are about to light us up. Any day now. <laughs> so go out. If you can find Orion, there it is. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then you're completely lost. So here's the belt, the sword. This is the Orion. <whistles> Up here near Castor. See, this is Castor and Pollock of Gemini. In case you didn't know. Alhenna. But you want to look near Castor, just up and right, and the meteorites will go pew, 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 right out of here. That's about the best I can do for you. Are you ready? Not for the Geminids. They're just a fun light show. Are you ready for the grid down scenario in the near future? I set up the ham radio section of our preparedness store. Best ham radios available on the market. If you want to buy some, a friend something, how about buying them worldwide communication when the grid's down? This will only work if you have solar backup or generators. But you'll be able to communicate with those that have communication. Because when the grid goes down, if it goes down worldwide at some point, we're going to be communicating. Because we're going to be organizing. And we're going to be sharing information worldwide. Top of the line models. Um, if you're looking for a Entry level ham kit right here in the middle. Five star ICOM IC 718 get on the air ham bundle. If you're looking for all the parts trying to figure out what works together and you don't know what to do, it's all here with instructions. It's quite pricey at $1,200. I agree. But that's a real ham radio setup. And the lowest you can get in at the top is the highest end price. <clears throat> if you want a high end portable model, 317, the Yesu Original FT 7900R Amateur Radio, dual band, 144, 440 megahertz transceiver, 5045 watt. Very limited. There's your band. Very limited. And if you want a smaller limited structure here, so here's the top end. <clears throat> Digital interface, the ICOM Deluxe 14440, a little bit larger band, amateur mobile transceiver with touchscreen. 
it's about 450 so it's a little larger width but you can get away pretty cheap here and here we have the CC Crane CCE Radio 2E Enhanced Portable AM FM Weather Radio Multiband 2 Meter Handband Black CCBE Radio. So you can listen in on the communications for 169 to all the people talking around the world when an event happens. And for 73 bucks, you're in. Let's click on it. Come on. <clears throat> There's much cheaper products here, but this is the Talk Coop. 25 to 20 watt UHF Viet mobile radio, mini car amateur radio, free programming cable, NCD. So you can use this as a central hub for your walkie talkie station. And it'll get you into learning a little bit about shortwave. For 58 bucks, a five pack of the Bofuang BS888 portable handheld two way ham radios. And I believe that this is a nice little portable shortwave radio. Two-way transceiver, dual band, 136, 174, 400, 520 megahertz power, two-way. So lots of good products in here. Check it out. If you're into shortwave, FM, ham, the store is, keeps blinking. It's really annoying. <laughs> uh, there's introductory books. Here's a Quashang URV 50 second gen dual two band weight radio with two antennas. These are programmable hams. Walkie talkies for 29 bucks. Are you kidding me? Do some homework. If you don't know what I'm talking about, get a little book here on amateur radio. I also have the World of Ham from 1901 to 1950. You can get a subscription to amateur radio magazine. And the Ham Radio Guide for Dummies, 17 bucks delivered. Welcome to Christmas. 188 bucks for a remote ham radio. 132 from Prime. Delivered. There's hundreds of options here. President Ronald 10 meter amateur ham. 131. Do it. I'm done. Volcanoes are exploding. As predicted. You've been informed. I apologize for being late. Secret Valley has been funded. If you didn't reply, you can visit. Be safe.